Welcome back, everybody, to the Lonely Man's Podcast. Yay, just just the three of us. We can make it if we try. Just the you three of us. You might want to cut us. that part out, too. You no, and you and uh, us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say who canceled on us this week. Eh, it's well, fine. Ben already did. No, it was Tony Casillas. He had everybody. a client. He has a job. Does he have a job? <laughs> yeah, he must. He has a client. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't know what type of client. Well, that's just what he said. Yeah. Oh, well. This is episode 99, guys. Episode 100 next week. We need to get a special wow. guest on for 100. I was thinking Paul Cypher should be the special guest on episode 100. All right. If we can get a Paul Cypher sighting, that's always a fun time. Are you back Do we next have, Tuesday? We have four mics, right? Yeah. yeah, I get back Sunday. Do we have four mics? Yeah. Is this Holly. your first time on the podcast? Holly, you're staring at me. <laughs> how many, how many times, is this your first time? On the, I've never been here before. Fuck. I forget how we do this. I've been t- in the sun for a very long time today. Did you guys hit the pool? No, I was at Buzz Mill with Paul Cyphers writing. Oh, snap. You write anything funny? Uh, I workshop some stuff. All right. That sounds like a failure. <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> it's my polite way of saying I did nothing. I did sh- no, I didn't. I did some stuff. More writing than I did today. I did. Okay. Hey, man. Uh, making a podcast takes a lot of time and effort, man. Reward that work and effort that we put in by following us on YouTube at Lonely Man's Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to the Patreon. Support the podcast with real money. At patreon.com slash lonelymans for bonus episodes. And make sure you check out our merch at teespring.com slash lonelymanspodcast. Get yourself a hoodie or a fanny pack or whatever you guys want. All right. Back to the show. Peace. I've been in a weird, like, uh, writing phase. Like, Mm -hmm. I write every morning. And, like, some days I'm just, like, recently it feels like I've been just writing pure dog shit. Just, like, over (laughs) there, just, like, pure doo-doo. However, uh, somehow, like, when I, like... I'll try like an idea on stage and I've been able to make stuff work just randomly without writing it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they go hand in hand or not, but it's been very weird. Like I've been able to just like make stuff work recently. You, you do a new idea on stage that you haven't written. Yeah. It's like, I'll have a thought and I'll try to write a joke about it on st- like in my notebook and it'll just be garbage. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, this is let's throw away, burn the whole book. But then like on stage, I'll just like rant about it for a little bit or I'll like get a line up from it that I mm. didn't know when I was like, I couldn't think of what I was writing. But are you using a starting place from your writing? <sighs> yeah, you're conceptualizing it in the notebook, so. I want to think so, but this writing feels really, it feels real bad lately. Like, it's been <laughs> real just garbage. <laughs> like, but I guess it's just like at least time in my day where I'm just thinking about comedy, which I think is important, like thinking about your material and going over shit. But mm-hmm. You should do a Ben's Notebook review on the next episode. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> on episode 100. We're just going to review the, the whackest jokes we wrote in the notebook. <laughs> That'd be a good Patreon segment. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Whack jokes. Well, like the, the worst jokes we've ever written. I have like I have like six journals I brought from home from like that date all the way back to like April 2020, like the peak of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some real trash in there. Well, yeah, we can do worst jokes of the week. Ooh, I like that. The the worst the the worst doo-doo report. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell Straight you doo-doo. I'll tell you what's not doo-doo. My favorite bit in Austin right now. Mm-hmm. I whenever uh I won't say his name on air, Tyler Large, does his, uh, (laughs) (laughs) does his, uh, his gay rap song. The slam poem. (laughs) His pride slam poetry. (laughs) It is the most outlandish, ridiculous Mm. bit I've ever heard. And every time. Oh, he always says gay pride month is coming up. It actually is coming up now. Oh yeah. This is (laughs) the only, this is the best time for that joke. It's like the peak for that joke that right, right now. before gay pride month actually hits and then ne- all next month you can say yo it's gay pride month i'm gonna do a gay pride s- slam poem <laughs> but every time he just adds in the most ridiculous things and i'm yeah. just like it's the, it's the most outlandish thing i've ever heard and i laugh so hard every time for no reason the first time i ever heard it was gay pride month because i moved here in june and then oh. i like saw that and i was like all right, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are pretty progressive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you say about Eskimos? Uh, something about Eskimo kisses. Uh, we could do the Eskimo business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my Eskimo business. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so yeah, that's some really funny lines in there. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> somewhere, somewhere on my brother's computer, there is a there's a rap song recorded that I, after many many white claws, <laughs> recorded in the year twenty twenty. You jumped in the booth. Yeah, he just had like a setup in our basement. Yeah, you were and, laying uh, down some bars. Yeah, <laughs> and I had to like re, I had to like keep redoing it. Like it was like it was a real, how many takes a real did, session. How many takes did you go in there? <laughs> I don't remember. I think it was like four or five. Oh, Rapping in the booth is harder than people think it is. Yeah. It really was. It was challenging, and it was good for me to get out of my comfort zone. I used to get so nervous, like when I would try to record rap songs. I don't know why. I like stutter all my shit. You're not one take Drake, bro. <laughs> I'm not tried to be. <laughs> Just is there like a? Is there like a hard drive of all your recorded rap songs? Oh, uh, they're they're so lost. I might have a burn CD from like 2004 <laughs> that somehow carried with all the shit that I've moved from like my mom's house to my apartments and such. Uh, I don't I don't even think I have a CD player. Do you? Uh, I don't know if my car does. Probably not. Oh, yeah, my That's car cool. does. All right, yeah. If I have me <laughs> rapping on a CD, I'll play in the car. I, I nice. Really, everyone, why does everyone always have, like, evidence of them rapping somewhere? I feel like we found a Jimmy Cash uh, mixtape at some point and heard a Jimmy Cash <laughs> rap. We've rap. all tried it at some point. We've yeah. all done it. I only like freestyling when I got high or drunk with some friends, but mm. that was about the furthest I ever went. I never like wanted to step into a studio and be like, "Yo, hey, turn my headphones up." <laughs> I had a I had an album in the in a store. Wait, what? Not stores. We just went to one store and said, "Hey, will you sell our rap CD?" And then the one guy that we told about it went and bought it at the store. <laughs> <laughs> so you made one sale. We made one sale over there. What yeah. was the, what was what the name, was of, the name of it? <laughs> uh, it was Bloodstained Records. You guys had a record company before was it, a group name? Was it the? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Do you have a band group? No, we just have a we have a, <laughs> a label. Though. I was Alan Dayton. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Sean was Crimes, but everyone called him K Rhymes because it was K and then Rhymes with a Z. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm crimes. Like, I commit crimes. So they're like, oh, we got K-Rhymes up next. Because <laughs> we would go do showcases. Do you, how many show- <laughs> wait, wait, how many? Wait a minute. Showcases. <laughs> <laughs> how many showcases did you do? At least, like, two or three. Did you do them at the Palladium? No, we would go. There were all these, like, Juggalo showcases out in um, Attleboro. Okay. Who who was the lead singer? Who was that, bro? What's that? Or did you guys all like Crime to- Crimes was the he owns Bloodstained Records and <laughs> he produced a lot of the beats. But then this was also the era of SoundClick. Do you remember SoundClick? Before SoundCloud, people would make beats and put them on SoundClick. Hmm. So you would download People would just rip sound click beats and just like to put them on their album with nobody's permission <laughs> or anything. <laughs> I'm guessing that's what you guys did at Bloodstained Records. We did some of that. There was also uh, MySpace beats were very big at the time. Do you know how to ma- uh, make beats? Uh, very rudimentally, yeah. Do, wait a second. Do you remember any of your bars that you dropped as Ellen Dayton? Uh, oh. What was the? We did a song called "Why You Hate," and we actually made that beat. It was like a crunk beat. Why you hate it? <laughs> the chorus was just all that's going. Why you hate it? Why you hate? Why you hate? <laughs> Wait a sec. How do I not know this about you? <laughs> you don't know anything about Jesse. He's full of mystery. This is, no, I'm full of mystery. I'm no, talking about Jesse has ben no mystery. This is <laughs> this is the one ben. thing I've never heard. Of. I've mentioned that I've rapped before, <laughs> but I didn't know you guys actually like made an album and a showcase and like actually. Yeah. How oh, did how did you do with the showcase? You guys get uh, you guys kill. We did pretty well, but now thinking back of it to it, like we rapped over our vocals, which I'm very highly against now. <laughs> I would never do that now. Yeah, I think the back, I think the backup vocals is cheating. It's, it's like bringing a notebook on stage. Very much so cheating. Did, uh, you, did you write your own lyrics, or did, uh, did did Crimes write all the lyrics? Oh no, I wrote. I wrote so was it lyrics. just you and Crimes, or are there more members of this group? No, Carl was uh was Polly D. This is three years, four years before Jersey Shore came out. Oh, that's weird. So we all had all day names. So mine was Alan Dayton. All day is in the name. And then he was Paul Damon. Okay. Paul Damon. I, I hear it. Okay. <laughs> I forget what Crimes is was. He never like stuck with his. Um, I So now I'm Young Finna. I didn't become Young Finna until years later when I wasn't rapping. 
<laughs> Which my and looking back was a really fucked up order of events. I know I should have been. I wish I had the name Young Finna in two thousand five. That's such a good name. If you would have, yeah, Young Finna. Might no have one's up. taking that. I feel like there has to be there has to be a Young Finna floating around. There, out there are. Yeah, I can't. I don't think I can get the name on Instagram. I have Young Finna on Twitter. I thought you just changed your Instagram to Young Finna. Um, I'm still at Jesse Oh, so it's just a at Young Finna. AKA. With no spaces or periods or underscores or like dashes or anything, I think that's taken. Do, do you think that store is still selling? Like your CD still there? Um, Jelly's discs <laughs> <laughs> on Park Ave in Worcester. Did you ever go there? No, is that what it was called? Jelly's discs. Yeah, it was Jelly's. There's uh, no way that place is still open. It might be Jelly's. It lasts. It, dude, I don't. Somehow, some way, it's lasted a long time. Albums closed. I never went over Wait, there. Wait, albums? <laughs> 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 but Jellies, um, I went to a Juggalo signing over there one time, CD signing, for Anybody Killa. And uh, I remember they had like a chain link fence inside of their window for like to like block the glass being broken or something oh, like that. Nice. Some Juggalo was all fucked up and kept shaking the fence inside and busted out the window and got kicked out of the CD signing <laughs> and like <laughs> made a huge mess. Do you guys paint your faces for your performance? Um, no, no, we, uh, did we paint our faces? There was one show we did where we actually did a lip sync battle. Uh, we were just watching a lip sync battle thing. We did like a juggalo lip sync type thing. We saw like other people do it and we were like, oh, that's cool. So then we did, this is when we were like 14 or 15. We did our own at some like backyard party. We just went up and like lip synced. And now looking back, that is the stupidest thing ever. Wait, how old were you when the Bloodstained Records was uh, conceived? I was like 16, 15, 16. You guys were entrepreneurs. When entrepreneurs. I, when I was 17, that was like the height of my rapping. That was like the peak of my abilities and stuff. But we were so lazy with it. We would try to meet up every week and like record a song. But then like the beat wouldn't be right. We couldn't choose a beat. Uh, we would spend all the time rolling up the weed and smoking it. And then we would try to write a whole rap like all at once right then and there and then record it and only like one person would get their verse recorded because recording in the booth is a lot harder than people think it is <laughs> so you're doing a lot of takes it really is it's hard when you have the headphones on and you're like trying to i've never recorded in a booth but uh wait so you like guys went to an actual studio and recorded this no it was like crimes uh mom's apartment in southbridge massachusetts okay uh, but he cleared out his closet. I think he like drilled holes in like the walls and stuff too and ran like wires in there and then like mounted a microphone with a pop filter that was made out of a clothes hanger and a woman's nylon stocking pulled <laughs> over it. <laughs> <laughs> and then these like shitty karaoke microphones <laughs> plugged into the computer. Uh, his computer was right outside the closet. It was like it was kind of fun to be like, but you were like, I don't, I don't know if there was a light in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, for what 2003, this is pretty good. Like this you were, you is, were this like oh four, oh five. Yeah, yeah, this this had to been pretty early on. Like this was before like the internet, before iPhone. So y'all were out here really doing things. We were like as soon as you could start like recording rap. Like this is yeah, this is like peak MySpace when people were like, oh, I can make beats and record them on my computer and upload them somewhere on the internet. Yeah. So you yeah. could have been, you could have, you could have made it if you would have just. If we stuck around long enough until like the SoundCloud era, if we waited like another five years and got better at it, yeah. This has gotten better over the, f yeah, that's a, that's a thing, getting better over time. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know about the young, I didn't know about those days. I was like young Finn was the rap career, but no. The all day click. <laughs> all day click. That was our group name. Yeah. The ADC all day click. <laughs> I like how you guys came up with all of these, but you guys were like, uh, what's that group with a young, that young Jeezy was a part of beforehand? USDA. <laughs> USDA, dude. No one ever did anything. They just had a click. No one ever made anything except for Jeezy. A lot of us like tried. Our friend Mike, he was Caesar instead of Caesar. Like Caesar dressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> C 
Caesar. He was Caesar. I, I didn't know your friends were so progressive with their nouns back then, dude. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, he was there back then. I think it was C dash Z E R because he was like a crip or something like that. Yeah, know. a lot of crips in uh, Attleboro, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> of- wait, were you the only white guy in this group? We were all white guys. Yeah, that's uh-huh. <laughs> oh wait, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Caesar was a ginger white kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was Crimes' real name? Sean. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> C- <laughs> Caesar was Mike. Joel was Big J. Uh, Carl was uh, Polly D. I was Alan Dayton. And then, yeah, there's the five of us. But then, uh, I don't know if Mike, I don't know if Caesar or Mike ever performed with us. We would do shows with just the four of us all the time. Uh, Carl would drive us out to Attleboro. We would do these things. And then, like, that's when I realized, like, I was like, oh, I want to get into lights. The lights of the shows are super cool. There was like a couple places where we did shows where they had like the lighting board in the back and like no one would be fucking around with it. So I would start doing lights for other people's like sets. So I would like hit the strobes during like the hi hats and shit. Or like every, if they had a DJ, every time the DJ or the hype man would say something, I would throw on like a different light for him. <laughs> bam, 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 and throw on a light. Yeah, like like the like the there was this one set where the DJ would do, he was like hyping up all the lyrics. So he would do like the last line or like the last word or like the verse. And like there was a light mounted right above the DJ table and I would just like pop that on. And once he realized I was doing that, he, he didn't know who I was. He was like, oh, he would get like super hyped during his parts. <laughs> so I go hard. And the rapper afterwards was like, yo, were you doing the lights for my DJ? That was sick. <laughs> you did like lights. When we did that, that open mic over at, a, um, we used to do the open mic at, under the pizza joint in Worcester at the left, the, the woo-ha-ha. Yeah, and then we when Jimmy wouldn't host sometimes, and you'd host, and they had that little switchboard with like oh, the lights yeah. in the background. Oh yeah, I was trying to adjust all the lights. Yeah, you'd right. always adjust the lights, and all of a sudden we got sound effects just yeah. in the background. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> <laughs> After every, yeah, I bought look at us, all these lights. We yeah, we uh, <laughs> all of the lights. We got lights for the for the podcast. I bought a spotlight for the shows we do. Lighting is very important. It's very serious <laughs> about like I bought a bunch of lights for my apartment. Yeah, like string lights. I bought for this apartment when I moved in here. They're still in the box. They just got. Oh, yeah. They were all under your bed. They're still there. They're just in boxes. I have now I have all the space and just no string lights up. You finally took your floor lamp like a week ago. Yeah. You know, baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> did you install it in your house? Did you plug I, it in? You know what? I did, but I'm not a big lights person. Then why did you take the light? Well, because I, I needed it. Okay. It's still there. But like, I just found that most of the time, like, I just I'm always in a dark room and I don't know if that's normal or not. Like I just hmm. I keep my light on a lot, but I never open I opened my curtain the other day and left it open for a few days. It was kinda nice having natural sunlight. Yeah, your room is a literal cave. <laughs> <laughs> I like I go in there and then I fall asleep and then I'm just like I don't know what day it is, what time <laughs> it is. I'm like, huh? What? Yeah, I'm like, why am I depressed? I'm like, oh yeah, because I don't know what time it is. I'm not getting any vitamin D. You know who else did that? Uh Heath Ledger when he was filming his character in the Batman movie, the Joker. <laughs> kept the he, blinds he kept the blinds closed and like lived in like a dark room so he could like get in character for that uh, for that role so that's too much mm. commitment yeah if you think that's a lot look up daniel day lewis that dude's a fucking freak what did he do daniel day lewis so he's like a method actor Mm. so like he'll go into like he'll be doing like a role and he'll like go like live like in like a situation that makes him like secluded or like in the forest or whatever that's so like Uh, like that character like so he completely like buys in like he's a he's a queer dude Mm. but that's why his character roles are so good yeah i heard you had to call him mr lincoln on the set of lincoln yeah like he went in and like i feel like someone said him for lincoln like he lived in like a cabin for like a certain amount of time while getting into character for the role so he could like see how like lincoln lived and shit like that that's fascinating though like that Mm. somebody actually does that yeah he's like the he's like a method actor so when he does like he really goes into like becoming that character role yeah Which, which would be really fucking weird to just go into like something that much like you think actors like lose themselves? Like you, you kind of like a sense of yourself, right? In the music in like the a, moment. What's up? In the music, in the moment. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I'll spill this water. Right I now. feel like comedians have the advantage that the only character we really have is based on ourselves and our own life experience. So we've already done all the things that we're performing on stage. Yeah, so I'm being very method right now. I'm trying to be a depressed. 
<laughs> comedian. Just depressed people are funny. <laughs> they're not motivated or... <laughs> you know what's weird? Well, yeah. But they're funny. Isn't it weird that, like... I've, I don't really... Like, I feel like there's such a difference between the way, like, the things that, like, black comics talk about or, like, different culture comics talk about versus, like, white guy comics talk about. Because I feel like mm. a lot of white guy comics ex- and, like, white women even, all, like, address depression, like, a lot of their sets. And, like, yeah. it's very rarely expressed by black comics. And what it is, it's always, like, like some, it's, like, a different, like, a very different, it feels like. I was watching a podcast the other day, and they were, like, watching Andrew Dice Clay, and they realized that he's, like the original like Def Jam style comic because every other comic is very like self-deprecating uh whereas Dice was like like I fucked it till her, sh- her pussy fell out or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like that's like Def Jam too they're like all the stool humping like my dick's too big like all this like you're like being you're able to brag about shit I need to watch Def Jam that's on my bucket list should I've we, never should, seen should it should we do the uh yeah, Def Jam would be like, imagine exactly what you do in comedy, and then the exact opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like Def so they Jam. have confidence and energy? <laughs> exactly. That's 90% of Def Jam right yeah. there is uh, swag and energy. I mean, I can picture it, but like... But yeah, so like that's their whole thing. It. Hamburger. <laughs> I need to find this woman's set. I listened to it. When we drove down here, I listened to the whole entire first season of Def Jam on Spotify. And this woman did something. She didn't say anything. She did some sort of act out. And it crushed harder than any other thing on the show. And I have no idea what she did. You, you, but you don't remember her name? I don't remember her name. Because there was like a couple up. of women that were really big. Like Melissa Camacho was really big into Def Jam back then. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, there were some female comics that were killing it in the Def, Def Jam in the... Was it like early '90s? Was Def Jam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like '92. Yeah, Martin Lawrence used to host Def Jam with no shirt on. <laughs> Martin, yeah. yeah, no white guy could do that. <laughs> no, I feel like there's some, but I don't know which white guy comic would do that. Channing Tatum can't take his shirt off and be like funny. Channing Tatum did take his shirt off and made millions, though. That nigga made. Was he funny in Magic Mike? I don't know, but he made Magic Mike Not money. Really, the plot kind of sucked. <laughs> You was don't watch uh, it for the plot, you know? Was McConaughey funny with his shirt off in the movie? I honestly, I was 16. I really don't remember <laughs> anything about that movie. Holly's like, what I don't even remember out? Matthew McConaughey in the movie. I was just like, <laughs> is this how movie came supposed out in to like, I don't know, 20. Holly was like, this is how men look? 20. <laughs> yeah, really. you dis- <laughs> <laughs> Boy, were you disappointed? <laughs> I'm going to get one of these. <laughs> Come few and far between, girls. <laughs> All makes sense now. Yeah, I, I watched you've it. Never, you've oh, never seen okay. Bernie Mac? I must have. I definitely have. I ain't have. scared of you motherfuckers. I ain't like, scared of you motherfuckers. It's so crazy. Oh my gosh, that bit. Yeah, it's so good. There's yep. like a DJ's involved. He's wearing uh, white pants with his face airbrushed on him. Like he keeps saying, <laughs> kick it! How kick it! How <laughs> come white, white comedy shows never get the DJ? Every time I've ever done comedy in a black room, there's always a DJ. Morgan Linewall has a DJ. You need oh, a, does a he? D- yeah. Mu- and even if you don't have a DJ, just like having someone play music up there when you go up there. I did a show last night at the Alamo. Oh, Draft yeah. They House. do that. And then like that. But like a DJ's cool because you could like, or just someone that you could be like, yo, kick that shit. Hit, and you, like, you can let them know to like play like a sound or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like when Bernie, kick ass. And he just keeps doing that little dance and shit. That's I guess so dope. Creek does that, I guess. So. I just think it's cool, mm-hmm. like, just be up there dancing for a second to the beat. When if it's like a hot beat and they drop before you get up there, yeah. you know, you're just up there, like, getting it a little bit. When there's a real DJ, I always got to see if they have the air horn sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> so they can hit you with that bam, 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 bam. Yeah, so if a joke bombs, I just point at them and they hit the air horn, and that <laughs> gets a laugh, and then I go into my next show. I did that at Latasha uh, Hughes? Hughes's show, yeah. Did oh, you ever do that funny. show? Uh, where is it? It was in Worcester somewhere. It was in this black club. It had a DJ. I don't think so. Uh, like there would be like no one there. Uh, it would, it started super late. I'm sorry, Latasha, if you're watching this, your show started very late because the DJ had to set up his equipment. (laughs) We don't need a DJ for this comedy show. Whoa, 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 bro. We're talking about the aesthetic, dog. It is the aesthetic. (laughs) It's the aesthetic. R.I.P. Casey Casey Durkin. Shout out to Casey Durkin. That's the gang. That's the most gangster thing anybody ever said about a comedy show, dog. The aesthetic. Why do we need a DJ? John, it's part of my aesthetic. It's part of the, my aesthetic. You gotta have an aesthetic. And if you don't have an aesthetic, you're doing the comedy thing wrong. Yeah. 
But that's the first thing you need to establish before you have uh, an act or sell tickets. The, the aesthetic. T- t- tickets, bro. You know what sells tickets, Dot? The aesthetic. The aesthetic. <laughs> exactly. See, now you're getting it, bro. Once you have the aesthetic, the tickets sell themselves. I think she made John do a, a, a shirtless photo shoot. She did. In her it pool. It was the flyer. Yeah. <laughs> I w- my name is still tagged on that flyer. You were at the you were at that show. I was supposed to be on it, and then I got COVID, and uh, I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. And I was so mad. Like it looked fun. I kind of wish that I was on it. I heard it was a giant shit show. <laughs> I heard a lot went down. I heard a lot. There was some cat fights. I heard uh, it yeah, got pretty sounds crazy. Sounds like I should have been there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it's not, it looks so. It was like a whole block party. She like the whole block was like. I think mm. it was something. I was talking to James. Dorsey about it last year because mm-hmm. he was there and he was like, yeah, it was crazy. When did Casey die? Was that 2020 or it was? Yeah, was it was, it right it was two days before Christmas. I remember, like, I like opened in up Facebook. In 2020. 2020. Yeah. Okay. Did anyone ever figure out how? Uh, I don't know. I think they they like I don't Eric know. Taylor. No tell one us ever. How s- it happened. <laughs> no one ever like came. Out, I don't think anyone came out and said anything. There's like rumors floating, but Eric Taylor became rumors. like the widow Durkin somehow. <laughs> he knew this. He like knew everything. About oh, what was going he on. wrote the tribute. Yeah, he, he wrote was, like, like a really in the nice obituary. tribute. And, like it said, like her like mentor Eric Taylor. Like I, I wonder if he spoke at the funeral. I don't. Uh, I, I didn't know they had that kind of relationship. I went to the. I don't wake. think they did. <laughs> I didn't go to the funeral. I went to the wake. How was the wake? How, how do you think it was? <laughs> what if I was like, oh, fucking sick? <laughs> like, was wasn't Casey dressed in like her raver gear in the casket? Yeah, she had a microphone too. Oh, that's so sick. Did she do it? Did anyone do a type <laughs> five? So did sick. anyone do a type five? No one did a type five. <laughs> they did a lot of loose fives. Yeah. Of, it was co- it was COVID, so they literally like they like shoved you down the line. They're like, all right, hurry up, six feet apart. And, like, oh, it was like yeah. shoot, shoot, like you had to go so like I didn't even like like I blinked and I was back in my car driving home from the wake. And you I was like, a selfie with Casey in the casket. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Casey would have so like <laughs> Casey would have enjoyed that. So wrong. She wanted to, she wanted to be dressed in her raver gear. <laughs> That's very cool that they did that. I don't want to be buried in a suit. I don't wear suits. Bury me in my Pimp C t shirt. <laughs> Jesse, is there something you want to tell us? <laughs> when I die, bury me in my Pimp C t shirt. Uh, black skinny I'm about jeans. To say, Stop. Only black pants, Jesse Rock. <laughs> black Pimp C t shirt and some black vans. Uh, or some Adidas. Adidas preferred. Okay. Fre- brand new Adidas. Get you a pair of Yeezys black. Get you a real pair of Yeezys. <laughs> yeah, bury me in real <laughs> Yeezys. <laughs> no, have you heard of this trend? The afterlife's going to be better than this. <laughs> have you heard of this uh, trend? Of, I don't uh, like this. Like uh, women um, like, re- like selling their like designer handbags for knockoff designer handbags. Wait, they're selling they're designer selling handbags for knockoff? Yeah, like you get they're selling their like, real bags yeah, in exchange like for fake bags. They're selling a Birkin bag, but then like the now the thing is like spending a bunch of money to buy f- knockoff Birkin bags. Why? What? Who where is So they're saying like, oh, well, with my one Birkin bag, I can buy like 500,000 knockoff Birkin no, bags these kind of. Knockoffs are also expensive. They're just like knockoff. It's what? like a, it's like a new trend of buying knockoff. Dude, like people a, with money need to really figure out something better to do with it. I feel like this isn't a real trend. Can I'm, you look this up? I'm looking this up because I want to Cuz knockoff stuff isn't expensive. Like they have those New York markets all the time where you can get fake coach for like 10 bucks. Mm. How much is a Birkin? Like fifty thousand dollars, or is that not enough? That's definitely not how much it is. I, I don't think that seems a little high. <laughs> that seems like a house. Wait, no, that's a no. I think they're very like expensive. That's a, that's the price of like a nice car. What are, uh, what fifty thousand dollars? Yeah, <laughs> I don't I can, know anything. <laughs> um, I'm I'm looking up the I'm looking up the trend, a fake Birkin trend. <laughs> yeah. How do you spell Birkin? Is it B U R K H A I N? Birkin. B-U-R-K-A-N. Oh, I'm thinking of a different designer. That's why I was thinking of Tory Burke. Burke, which yeah. is definitely more. Not the Tory Birch. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> My bag came from Marshalls. All right. <laughs> it doesn't even have a print. How much is a How much is a Birkin bag? How much is a Birkin bag? I don't yeah. know. It's a why is every TikToker on? Yeah. Here we go. Hold on. Well, I'll, I'll find out how much a Birkin bag is. But it's a real thing. TikTokers. Well, TikTokers are now the trend. When what was the article? What's up? What was the article called? Uh, I didn't just look it up. We're jumping around too much. Yeah, we're 
Let's find out how much a Birkin bag is for sale, though. Okay, it might, it might say in the article. Should we go talk back to talking about Jesse's death? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to be buried in, buried in my Ray-Bans. With the vape. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I, mean, I want everyone at my funeral to, like, vape as my uh, casket is carried out. Yeah. See, I really Dude, hate you this. Can get a her- <laughs> this is making blows, me so uncomfortable. Everyone blows vape smoke. <laughs> you can get a Hermer's Birkin Cellier bag for just, like, a... Forty-five thousand dollars. Ooh, see, I was close. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean. Oh like, wow! All right, so what's the fake Birkin trend? Find that article. I'm also getting there, but I just—I didn't even know it's made by Hermes. Hermes Link. Hermes. Yeah, that's how you gotta say it. Some people say Hermes. And Hermes. Then you, then you know they're a loser. If you that's how I—I I think I believe I pronounced it like that the first time, and it was laughed out of the room. Oh no! You can get a Herm. You can get a Hermes for like four grand. Yeah, it's not as expensive. Yeah, so the cheapest one here is four grand. All right, but I want to know why people are trading fake bags. That's where we started here. Now you're just shopping for bags. Uh, I don't even wear bags. It's but the power of the algorithm. They know. <laughs> what you, they know. They, they know what he wants to buy. You're leaving for a trip tomorrow. Ben. You're looking for <laughs> luggage right now. Uh, I need. To, oh, I am. I'm. I'm should I, I feel like I should be more nervous than I am, but I'm not. How many shows are you doing out there? Uh, I, yeah, you know. Come on. Like those, those are real questions about details, Holly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you officially booked on anything? Yeah, I think so. All right. Vague Ben strikes again. <laughs> no, they put out All a right. they put out a schedule and they have me on like some. I don't know. They got weird names for them. I don't know exactly what the events are. They just be like, "Oh, you're doing." It's like 6 p.m. Fun fact check something. And I'm like, what the fuck yeah. does that mean? All right, that's a one show. <laughs> so I, I, I feel like I, I know I have like uh, probably like four or five shows that I'm on. Nice. That's like one a day. Yeah. But I don't really know what they're going to be. Some of them are like networking speed event for industry or something like that. And oh. I'm like, that's not. So you're not performing? So I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if I'm performing on that or if it's just like a. Networking. That sounds like a, like a, like one of those things where they just have a bunch of like tables out and you go around. That's and where like your business card you comes. Drop yeah, those I'm just, cars. I'm just going to walk Give in there. Give an EPK. Just throw them in there. A what? Electronic press kit. Like do comedians have those? I thought ra- only rappers had those. I did a comedy festival once, and I had to have an EPK. I took, I had my headshots, my bio, recent a couple, had like two recent tapes, links to two recent tapes, and then it had a willing to travel uh, document saying like all the cities that I was willing to travel to. Hmm. Eh. Nope, no one said anything about that. Did you even send a tape? I did send a tape. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think I was chosen for this based on my merit as a comedian by the <laughs> tape I sent. I thought it was because of about who you know and who you blow. No, they the the who I know just guaranteed that whoever books for the festival would just watch my tape. Oh, okay. He's just like it just makes you to the point where they actually watch your tape. That's yeah. all. So mm. yeah, so they watch my tape. I need a better tape. I don't. Did I apply to Big Pine? I don't even remember. What about the main course one? Um, the sound isn't great on it. Oh, that's what about the sound for the one way? I watched it back. I didn't like. I didn't kill as hard as I thought I did. Well, maybe it's just because the sound wasn't good. No, there's just, well, I don't know. There's just like I like pause very long, like in between jokes too. I'm there's, not like snapping. There's a weird thing. Like I've noticed that when I watch back sets of my own tapes, mm. I realize like I won. I never bomb as bad as I thought I did. Right. And I never kill as hard as I thought I did. Exactly. Yeah. Like the tape just the tape is just like, oh, every time I think I like murdered, I'll watch the tape. I was like, oh, it's fine. It's because of the adrenaline. It like enhances the experience. So when you're like, that's my mm. theory. And then when you're watching it without that adrenaline, yeah. you like you realize like, oh, that wasn't even like that. Maybe your cool. hearing senses are like heightened. So you're like hyper aware of everything in that moment and you think the laughs are so much bigger. <laughs> no, I see. Yeah, because it feels so or like y- you feel like that relief that it got like a big laugh. You're like, oh, that's so sick. And then when you listen back, you're like, ah. Oh, yeah. It was all right. Yeah. <laughs> I listened back to uh, to a show I did last week today and I was like, did I really bomb? I couldn't have bombed that hard. And I bombed really bad. <laughs> I did not feel good listening to that one. Uh, 13 minutes of just nothing hitting. <laughs> what show was that? San Antonio. I drove all the way out to San Antonio. 
and uh and i thought i was and i had spent all day working on this set like i was like newly unemployed and i was like i'm gonna spend all day i'm gonna put all my energy into the set it's gonna be such a good set drove all the way out there went up i took the bullet there was like 10 people in the audience i just ate dick after dick after dick. it was so bad and then um and then uh, I ordered a quesadilla, and uh, it wasn't good. It was a really bad quesadilla. It was just, like, the cheapest American cheese between, like, the cheapest tortilla. And it was $10. And then I found out I was getting paid $10. So I basically just zeroed out my paycheck. <laughs> 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 and then I had to drive all the way back, and it was lightning out. And <laughs> Is there anything worse than driving home after a bomb? Oh, God, Like a long so drive bad. after a long bomb? I think I called you bomb. after because I was just like, I need to talk. I can't be uh, alone yeah. with my thoughts right now. <laughs> Actually, I did a mic right after that, and the mic went, like, the best it could have. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, <laughs> I feel a little bit better now. Oh, yeah, I was at Lucky Duck. I had a fun set over there that I went to the creek and, like, just bombed to nobody. <laughs> there was, like, a pointless set. And, yeah. yeah, we called each other on the ride home. It was, uh, and it was like thundering and lightning out too. It was a very ominous evening. It <laughs> was an ominous evening. And the weird thing is I thought like it was the room. I was like, oh, this room sucks. Sorry, everybody. And then everybody else did really good. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> oh all right. <laughs> it's not the, that's the worst feeling. Shout like, out Jose de Hype. He, cho- he drank an entire bottle of wine throughout his set <laughs> on stage. Just like, he's just like, did you he don't kill? think I'll finish this? And he was like, oh yeah, the crowd was upset. Like, he has so much energy. It's just the, it's just the energy. Like, it's well, always the energy. It always goes back that, to that. Well, because there's, there's like two different types of ways to kill. Either you got to be like, if you're going to be like in the pocket on stage the whole time, like you're not moving, you're just on the, at the microphone just slinging the yucks. Like, you got to be, they got to be yucky. Like, they got to be up there. <laughs> like, you got to be really yucking it up. And then like... Then there's the other side, which just kills with energy, right? Which yeah. you have, like, and that can do, the only problem with that is, like, when you're feeling like shit or the audience is shit, then you still got to manufacture that same energy when it's not there. And that's difficult for some people to do if it's not natural to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, Shout uh, out Austin's, to them, yeah, Austin's own son, the murderous uh, Mr. Rocket, it's always funny when I watch him when he bombs because... Bombing with energy is probably the worst bomb. Like, because you're just up there, like, <laughs> the wild out on stage. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're just in the pocket and you're just like bombing, you're just like, oh. Mm-hmm. Then it's like one thing. But, like, if you're up there, like, you're sweating and you're dancing and you're yuck, chucking and jiving and you're moving, and then the audience is just like, nah, dude. <laughs> so he did your mom's favorite comic on Sunday, and uh, the judges were like, uh, this one judge was like, yeah, I just, like, don't get it <laughs> that's like 50 percent of the audience it's so funny because like because we were at that show the other night right yeah at, uh, but he oh, can like yeah. just walk through he can just pretend like he's not hearing himself bomb the whole time what's up even though he knows he might be bombing he can just like play it off and just go like do something it's, wacky it's so and like pace around the stage yeah, it's it, almost like bomb proof what well, it's bomb proof in your own head, but the audience definitely recognizes the bomb. Yeah. Like, because, like, after that, he, because he knows he bombs. Like, because we talked about it afterwards. He's yeah. like, yeah, he's like, that wasn't that good of a set either. But like, the people that love him love That's him. the thing. It's like, there's always that one person in the audience that's like, ah, and then everyone else is like, when he bombs, there's always that one person that's like, I love this guy. And everyone else is like, I don't get it. But when he kills, it's because there's a lot of those people that are like, it's a, uh, it's like a, he reminds me of like a like an Alan Fitzgerald, you know, like oh Alan Fitzgerald God. was very <laughs> hit him. like either the audience was going to love him and he was going to murder or the audience was going to turn on him quickly and it was going to go south. Like yeah. of all the times I've seen him do probably double digits amount of shows and they were either really good or really bad. He yeah. was never like in between. And I feel like he's no. the same way. Like he's either yeah. going to murder or he's going to bomb. Like there's no in between when you have like a very niche act or like an act that well that's you. the sacrifice you make when you decide to go with that brand like not everyone there's going to be a lot of people that don't like you but the people who do like you love you and i feel like that's like a lot of there's a lot of comics like that though that i i don't think a I lot of know. comics are like that polarizing though like a lot of comics fall somewhere on the spectrum but there's very few comics that are like either completely feasting or completely famine, like no in between. Like some comics are like, yeah, it's fine. Or like the, it's a good set or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. His is either like murder or it's like murder she wrote. There's no in between. Yeah. 
which is very like there's very few comics that I think are that polarizing to audiences. Yeah, I'm not polarizing anybody. Right. Like <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like my style of comedy, I'm like I feel like I'm like the Drake of comedy. It's just for everybody. Yeah. Like it's just like I don't <laughs> my life has never been I'll like, get like a pocket of people on this joke and then these people will love this joke and it kind of spreads around the room. Like like someone will like me at some point. For sure. sure I, I just look like this, so people are like, "Ah, <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Just look at that little in. girl on stage oh, doing big things." You know, like that commercial. You probably don't know. This. There's a commercial that Barbie made where there's just like a little girl, and she's like doing like this like big career. She's like in front of like a podium talking to like all these people, and it's yeah. like this seven year old girl. It's supposed to be like a woman's empowerment thing. That's how I feel when I'm <laughs> on stage. <laughs> how old is that commercial? I don't know. I'll find it. It's not that old. Yeah, send it to me. Maybe I'll put it up here. <laughs> it's just a little child at <laughs> a podium. She's either at like a podium, and there's one where she's like, I think there's one where she's like, the like the doctor will see you now, and then it's just this like little like eight year old girl. She's like, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could find pictures of me as a rapper and then put those in the back. Yes, please of do you, that. You should do that. Uh, pictures of you as a rapper but overlaid with your jokes. <laughs> like if you just had video of you rapping, but they're just overlaid with audio of your jokes. The intro to the podcast should just be one of your rap songs. <laughs> if, you, if you hit up Crimes, you don't think you'd have a copy of the disc somewhere? Uh, no, he's probably, uh, I don't know, honestly. Maybe. Do you think any of your crew would have like a copy or any of the music anywhere? We might have a CD, but like I don't think anyone has the technology to get it online right now. If you have a CD, you can get it online. I don't have a CD drive on my on Didn't my Didn't you say you have a CD player in your car? Yeah. So if they mail you the CD. Yeah, mail the CD. We'll make it work. We got good content. <laughs> yeah, get the CD. We'll find it. We'll we'll do the rest. Get All the right, CD. We'll get it. We'll get it on the, I, on I really want to see. I really want to see young Alan Dayton dropping bars on him <laughs> before <laughs> the young Finn and days. I don't even know what Alan Dayton was rapping about or what his rap voice sounds like. I wish we had "Why You Hating" because that was one of my favorite verses. I don't think it. I think that's unreleased. Were material. you a, yeah. Were you like a slower rapper? Or were you like a track. faster, like Yellow Wolf? Why type? you hating was like Why you hating Alan Dayton? They fake with the flow like that's Chris like bacon. But he like reads what it says. Is <laughs> <laughs> so you were like a faster rap. You I was trying to go fast on that one. Oh shit! But I was like mumble. I was almost mumble rap at the time. You were ahead of your time, bro. Oh, that's what you were. You were mumble rap. Oh five Gucci was just popping off. If you had to r- say which your beat, who your beat was closest to, who would it be? Who the beat was close? Like the, the beats that you use. Like if they resembled someone that's like famous now. Oh, I was obsessed with Houston and like Atlanta rap at the time. It like three six mafia. We why you hating was like crunk beat for sure. I think it had horns in it. It had like the fast like hi hats. I, I we, did, we we used a lot of horror <laughs> beats too. We tried to be like horror beats. Horror. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of horrors in the beats. <laughs> <This> <laughs> girls <laughs> going. Ah. <laughs> they do use a lot of those. There are uh-huh. some, yeah, we were doing porn. Right. Yeah, I feel just, bad for that poor girl that's just in the sound studio all day just to do that one line. Probably <laughs> like, took her like three, two, oh, we one. We just need a sound. Uh, <laughs> then she okay. comes in. They're like, oh, I'm, I have this big old role. They're like, okay, let's go to the booth. We just need a sound. She's like, uh huh. They're like, that's it. Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. <laughs> She's like, that's it. Yeah, yeah, you're good. We, that's all we needed. Like, we'll just loop it. You're good. <laughs> do I get paid? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, pay. Yeah, 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 we got you. <laughs> I'm always uh, you get exposure. <laughs> Ex- pay people an exposure. You know what the biggest okie doke is? It's college students when they hit you with that uh free inter- unpaid internship. Oh. That's the biggest okie doke I ever heard, man. The, the unpaid internship should be illegal because they, they yeah. I think I, I've talked about the unpaid internship a lot on here. Oh, I like the kids in there. Like it's an internship, but it's unpaid. I was like suckers. It's not, yeah. That's it's the okie doke. Only about. for kids who have a like a support system that can give them money that is true if you mm. do it's literally j- you got the trust fund designed to yeah, like trust funds are nice mm. i just used to always trust that there was no funds in my <laughs> <account>. <laughs> trust i have no funds. trust yeah. me there's <laughs> nothing <laughs> that was just <laughs> straight up struggle you know what's funny though i will say when I was super broke, like, and all my friends were just as broke as me, and we used to spend our summers, like, trying to find a way to, like, scrape up enough to get, like, an eighth of weed and some food and just, like, hang out, those were the most fun days mm-hmm. compared to, like, when I hung out with, like, people with money, and they're always like, okay, who's paying for this? And we're getting this. All right, I need this much from everybody, and we're doing it. Bruh, 
was so much more fun hanging out with the broke people. Just like it was just so much more like our experiences were so much more real. I didn't have a job until I was eighteen. Just off of being cool, I didn't pay for anything for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked all this weed for free. I never had my own weed till I got my own job. Never had my own cigarettes. Somehow I like scraped by. Because that's what being cool is like. What we what I found was just like it was just it was like whoever had it. Like everyone would just hooked it up. You yeah. know, sometimes you got it. Sometimes somebody else got yeah, it. Sometimes I would end up with some weed somehow. Yeah. And like oh shit, Jesse's got weed. Jesse, today. Yeah. And then you just it just always went around and like it's like a weird thing because we always feel like we're in such a like a me society. Like everything's got to be like me and mine and everything like mm-hmm. that. But like all the best times when it was just like I think that's why weed is so chill because weed was like the one thing that it's like it's way cooler to smoke weed with other people than it is by yourself. Like the best part about having weed is having cool people to smoke weed with, mm-hmm. like, and smoking at different places. Like, people would come pick Carl and me up at the skate park every day just to smoke a bl- like a bowl with us or a blunt with us, and then they would just drop us back off with our other friends who weren't high. <laughs> 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 they would hate us so much. <laughs> we're like, sorry, we're cool, dude. Yeah, yeah this is what happens. Like, <laughs> okay. honest, we used to have a whole house, like my buddy's house, and we would just get like. People would just come through and always bring new people to smoke with us because we were just like we were just like known as that crew. Like people mm-hmm. would be like, "Oh, someone's like, oh my gosh, so this is like my friend. She's never been like high before." And we were like sherpas of people's like stoners' experience. Oh, and just, I like, hated that. I thought it was hilarious getting people high. So we had all these contraptions in the house. We had like a three foot bong. We'd mix like hookah and weed. We rolled blunts. Like we used to do wild shit just to fuck with people, and it was hilarious. Anytime I, I, they were like, "Oh, it's their first time getting high or drunk," I'd be like, "All right, guys, I'm out. <laughs> uh-huh. Catch you later. Have fun with that. Good well, luck. Godspeed." <laughs> nah, there was like a lot of nerds in college. Like that's yeah. the thing is like when you get to college, you find out that like a lot of people like lived very sheltered fearful uh, lives in my neighborhood it was always like someone's little brother or sister i'm uh, like i'm not here for nah, their, nothing like that for their freak out dude. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> nah, and, but that's the thing is you could like make it chill though you just make it cool but like a lot of people were fucking nerds like they never had a black friend mm. till college they didn't know anything about smoking weed how old were you house. when you smoked weed I didn't smoke weed until I was one of those kids. You're 18. <laughs> He's I just talking about was himself right now. I was 19. Oh, holy shit! Yeah, yeah, I was 13. Well, I, I was 15, I think. It was Holly's even... cooler than you, dude. Nah. No, I took like one hit and went to bed. <laughs> I was I like, was... I got horseback riding in the morning. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're wrong about this. No, on my high horse. Okay. <laughs> that was Girl. dumb. Bro, we had a... <laughs> were you laying in bed staring at your horse painting on your wall? Probably. <laughs> he probably fuck. started talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it wasn't a painting. It was a. It was like a wallpaper thing. The it's whole a, wall looks was like, like this full of horses? No, so... It's uh, one horse. So when I was 10 years old, my mom was like, do you want this for your room? And I was like, of course. And it was this, it was this like literally six foot tall life-size horse wallpaper that just took up like an entire like my like entire wall and i would just wake up every morning and there's just giant horse just staring at me <laughs> so it's like you know how like so like for boys they had like the athlete picture it'd be like a life-size yeah. athlete on the wall you, you know that girls had like you know had like the jonas brothers or like you know all the all the girls had like the cute little like the boy posters no i just had a big giant horse on my wall and uh yeah and Were i you had like that. an equestrian girl up? You rode horses growing up. I I actually quit when I was like twelve. Oh. It was more of a joke, but like I kept, but like I never took the horse off the wall because <laughs> I was like, "Mom, can we please paint over it?" And she's like, "No." Did you ever have a guy sleep in that room with the horse? No, that's <laughs> <laughs> why do you think <laughs> that's why I had to take actually, it down. You could have been really good at horse riding. Like no, I didn't lose my virginity until college, so no one no one saw the horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that that could have been my line. Like, hey, you want to see my horse? When you were home for Christmas, you showed me on Facetime. Oh yeah, <laughs> that could have changed. Faster I think it was over if the summer. Kept over the riding summer. the horse, Holly. Hmm? Losing your virginity could have happened faster if you would have stayed riding the horse. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how, that's actually like a thing. You <laughs> <can> like <laughs> the horse girl thing. Yeah. Oh man. Fuck, I was just going to ask you something, and now I can't remember what I was going to ask. I covered it up with a curtain when I was in high school. Though. Um, <laughs> did you? Yeah, it has curtains over it. Now. Is it still there? Now it's just my dad's house. My dad just has a giant <laughs> horse in his <laughs> guest room. Oh, that his new wife and kids are sleeping in. <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking about being cool and smoking weed. Oh, yeah. I was saying, so when I was in high school, like, I never smoked weed. But all my best friends smoked and sold shit tons of weed, like mm. pounds and backpacks all the time. 
So like I was just in cars being around hot boxed cars like all the time. Never smoked it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I caught a contact a You'd couple of times. You'd be in, like, the fishbowl of the car? Yeah, we'd be in a, my friend's uh, convertible. My friend's sister had this, like, two-door coupe or whatever. It'd be, like, four of us. You can't see the windshield, bro. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't think I'm high, dude. <laughs> I don't know why we thought that was so cool. It's a hot box? Uh, oh, man. One kid, <laughs> there's so many stupid ways. You're like... Weed's not strong enough. We need to make the weed, but we don't want to do real drugs, so we need to make the weed stronger. So, like, they would be like, we'll fill the whole room with smoke and not breathe oxygen and get extra high. And, like, this kid would, like, all right, let's go into my bathroom. We'd go into the bathroom, and we'd smoke a blunt, and we'd be like, all right, put towels under the door and around the windows, and then he would turn the shower on extra hot. <laughs> That's what you do in college to smoke weed so the smoke doesn't escape the... Uh, I feel like when it gets into the water vapor, it like sticks into the walls and like smells even worse afterwards. The water part is silly, but yeah, the hot boxing made you feel cool though because you're just like, oh shit, I'm just fucking come out there. Like, you yeah. know, the gravity bong, remember the gravity bong? Oh my God, did yeah. I ever tell you this story of when I did a grab? The first grab? Oh man, no. What happened to first gravity bong holly? Okay, well, I was out for a nice, lovely run. It was two in the afternoon on a <laughs> Saturday or something oh, like that. Forget. And I was coming up my driveway and my brother's friend and my brother were parked on the driveway in this giant minivan. <laughs> it was like one of his friend's cars or something. And then all of a sudden, the automatic door just opened up. I was like, ding, ding, ding. And they just look at me. They're like, get in. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, okay. So I get in, and they're like, you ever done a grab before? And I'm like, no. <laughs> was the grab in the van? Yeah, the grab was in the van. Oh, of course it the was. Traveling, <laughs> the traveling gravity bond gets you every time, dude. <laughs> dude the kids with the minivan. Yeah. So they just, it's the middle of the day. And it's just like, so then they're like, they're like, all right, do it. So then they, you know, they. What was the gravity the bong made out of? Uh, Coke bottle. The two liter How, Coke? Yep, yeah, two, two liter, liter Coke, Coke bottle. Classic. In like a bucket? Or they had like a tub of water? Uh, I don't remember. It was a while back. Did you ever do the one made out of the fucking the water cooler jug? Oh, shit. <laughs> that I don't sounds even weird. We used to do them out of this like bucket in our sink. Like we yeah. had one in the sink, like a tub. But it was the, yeah, the, I remember the first gravity bong I hit and then sat down. You know the Poland Springs are like <coughs> the big jugs that go on top of the yeah. water cooler that you have to like lift up mm -hmm. onto there? Yeah. They would cut the, the... I did one of those one time. <laughs> oh, shit. They cut the bottom off of one of those, filled it up, and uh, it was Christmas Eve. I think I was 16. When I started, and then I woke up, it was New Year's. <laughs> Dude, Wait, I went what home. Happened? I lost my vision. <laughs> I thought I was blind for the rest of my life. I went home. And I, I was like, I'm, oh, my God. I'm so, I took one hit. And it was like when good weed had just come out, too. It was like like Jamaican red hair or something like stupid. Jamaican like red hair was so big when I first started smoking weed. That was like the that was the the, the, the cush of the time. I just remember my friend being like, oh, bro, you got to try some of this weed, dude. Like, yeah. he finally got it. Dude, I got some of some Jamaican red hair, bro. Dude, it had red <laughs> hair. It was everywhere. <laughs> there, was, there was Hydro. I don't even know if they make hydro anymore. I don't think they make Jamaican red hair anymore. Dude. They might, uh, yeah, Acapulco or Yukon Gold or Acapulco Gold or something like that. Oh, man, we just had the crime. Um, Maui, named it Maui. after potatoes. <laughs> Yukon, yeah. So, so what happened <laughs> after you took the yeah. grab bog? Uh, no, not you, Holly. What happened after oh, you took yeah. the grab bog? The oh, uh, weird things. Uh, <laughs> well, I like had mild hallucinations, which I feel like is pretty normal i guess i don't know but then uh i got really horny for no reason at all <laughs> and just how old were you at this time <laughs> 16 17 i think i was like 17 and uh and, and this is so embarrassing but uh just uh, i just became like very attracted to like household objects <laughs> <laughs> so like like there was like a chair and i was just like, were you like grinding the chair it didn't make any sense it's it really <laughs> looking back not one of my highlights <laughs> I don't. I you don't even think it was. Friends? No, I did not try to bang my brother's friends. They left after after they oh, gave they me the. Oh, you high. Yeah, like, and then they left. So I, I was just like that sometimes. I was People just alone. Just I fucked up and just send me off. Thinking that like the couch was flirting with me is very <laughs> <laughs> strange. Some girls would like rub on the corner of a couch. Holly's over there spitting game to the couch. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I don't even know what it was about. Like it's. Uh, what I can't. would you rate my couch on a scale of one to ten? This couch? One being not fuckable and ten being very fuckable. 
I don't know, man. You have to give me another grab bong and then I'll <laughs> be able to tell you. You know, this couch is underrated. Uh, this, is, this is a, it's a hefty couch. I, I remember my friend Alex. Shout out to Alex if he li- listens to this still. The first time he ever smoked weed was out of a gravity bong at our friend's house. I turned over and he's like pushing it down in the bucket. And I was like, Alex, what are you doing? <laughs> He like made it into like his mid twenties of never smoking weed before. Yeah, you remember Lauren? She came here this summer, my friend Lauren. Yeah. I got her high for the first time, which is so weird because then in you know, college or down here? In high school. Oh okay. I got her high for the first time in high school and it was a gravity bong. It was mm. this was another time. This wasn't the time I was. Is she alone. the one that smokes weed all the time now? Uh she used to. I don't know if she does anymore. Oh, let's really. say it's all your fault, Holly. Mm. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> I corrupted her and then I was like, you know what? I'm just not gonna smoke weed actually. Yeah, smoking weed, you know, I'm at the point in my life where smoking weed is uh slowly my, my weed consumption has decreased heavily. Mm. Just not even on pure principle, just on like time. Like I just don't have time to just be high all the time. I still wanna know what happened when Jesse went blind after hitting the uh the cooler Oh, yeah, so I took a shower, and then I don't know if it was, like, the heat or what was going on, but I walked out of my bathroom, and my mom was, like, getting stuff ready for the Christmas Eve party we're about to have, and all of a sudden, my vision just, like, tunneled in and just faded out to black, and my eyes were wide open, but I couldn't see anything, and I was like, oh, my God, I just went blind. (laughs) Jesse, take the blindfold off. I was like, what do I do? So, like, I, like, felt around me. I kind of, I had a layer of my house. I lived there for a long time. So Did you say anything to your mom, by the way, at this? No. Okay. I was like, I can't let her know that I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No one knows I'm blind. No one knows I'm blind yet. Everyone knows. And I'll have to explain that I just smoked weed on Christmas Eve before we, I think I got high on every Christmas Eve before I went to a family function somehow. Someone would come fuck me up like during the day. They'd be like, let's get high. And, like there'd be people that didn't have a family and things to do. <laughs> would come and get me high. And then I would have to go function in front of my family. So I like felt around me for like the staircase and sat down on the stairs and was like, oh my God, I'm blind. And I was like, just like trying to talk to my mom and like play it off for a minute. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to explain that I'm blind? <laughs> 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 did she know and then i i think i was like relaxed i was like all right i guess i'm just blind now this is what it is and then my, my vision like came back <laughs> it wasn't until you accepted it that it actually went away that's, that's that'll still happen to me if i like stand up too fast sometimes yeah oh like my vision will like go away and i'm like oh, like it'll, it'll completely be yeah it'll like fade out to black and i'll be like ah oh, it's coming back it's on its way that, that sounds healthy. I don't think that's. <laughs> I think you should get that checked. <laughs> like what? Uh, no, that doesn't sound normal. As someone who has great eyes, that's not how they work. Oh yeah, you do have great eyes. Yeah, my my Shut eyes. Up. You know that they see like really good at all the time. You have like fighter pilot vision. Pretty much, I do. I have like the. I used to have like the best vision possible. My eyes are going. I probably need contacts. You might need, bro. If your eyes are going black, that's not good at all. You might. Just no, 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 no. This is. I think that's like from like being like dizzy or something. Or I, I, it's not a, like an eye problem. All right. That's all right, like that. getting up too fast. Yeah, it's like vertigo or the. Uh, what do you call it? Maybe it's low blood sugar. Could be. <laughs> Yeah, I was probably dehydrated. I probably wasn't eating very like healthy. I think it's caused by low T. <laughs> <laughs> I know I hadn't gone through puberty yet. Not till my sixteenth birthday is like when I first like Which is crazy. Went through puberty. It's kinda weird though. Wait, like, on your sixteenth birthday? The first time I ever busted a nut <laughs> like something came out of my dick was on my sixteenth birthday. Wow. That was the first yeah. time you ever jerked off? No. I started jerking off like three years before that. But you'd never bust it when you jerked off? Nothing would come out. What? That's then that means you didn't bust. I'm not I would have an orgasm, but I wouldn't bust a nut. Yeah, there was no nut. I would just that, I don't think that's how nuts work. You don't have to something. No, because have his to come balls out. hadn't dropped yet. Uh no, he's thirteen years old. They fucking dropped. I was thirteen. <laughs> I remember that shit. And, no, some shit comes out. I don't know what you were doing. But I'm not the right. only one. I've heard other people talk about this on podcast. They started jerking off before, like their semen was developed or whatever happens. Huh. Yeah. I wonder I if that's bad for that, you because like, it's scientific. We're gonna have to. We need to get a doctor to verify these facts yeah. on the podcast. No, that's bro. like every kid that's ever been molested. I feel like you were just edging yourself, bro. <laughs> and there are like surgeries and stuff that guys will have where like they don't like like nothing like comes out anymore. 
Yeah, like vasectomies, right? Or yeah, no. or like like hormone like therapy. But even if you too. have a vasectomy, you realize shit still comes out. It I didn't yeah. know that. That yeah. I learned. <laughs> shit still comes out. It just doesn't have the baby making stuff in um, it. But like shit still comes out. Transgender people that are transitioning when they start taking like uh, estrogen and stuff like that, they'll still be able to like get hard and have an orgasm, but semen won't come out because they're not producing semen. So oh, I wasn't. My body wasn't producing semen yet. You can have an orgasm without producing semen. Yeah, but I'm I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I lived there. I'm for just three wondering years. who at 13 isn't busting nuts. Like that seems like a weird people that went through puberty late, late. Late blooming game. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the late bloomer game. So because I was always felt like I was. I remember. Well, I guess the first time I never jerked off until I had busted a nut already. Like and then. The first time I jerked off, I didn't bust a nut, but I don't think I had an orgasm. I thought I was like, "This is just lame," mm. and I quit. And then I didn't jerk off again for like three more months. Yeah. And then I was like fourteen or fifteen, and I was like doing, it, and then I was like, "Yeah, this is pretty lame." And I've just always felt like that the whole time. Like I've always just felt like jerking off is lame. It is lame, dude. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a good streak right now. I'm going on Are almost. You? Yeah, I'm on like a month and a half mm. of not jerking off. We'll uh, we'll have we'll get the hoe update on the Patreon. Yeah, the whole I'll, report. Yeah, I'll have to update the whole report. There are some new hap. There are some new fappenings in the whole report. Um, subscribe to the Patreon. I think we're gonna film a commercial after this. Oh yeah, we have to film the commercial. Yeah, we'll cut that in. So enjoy that commercial that we filmed, guys. Yeah, we <laughs> we're gonna it. put it at the end. All right. Bye. No, we'll, we'll throw it in the middle. <laughs> yeah. We'll I hope you guys enjoyed the commercial that we hopefully filmed. <laughs> I, think I think it'll go well. I like our eyes. Yeah, we'll see what's going on. Love y'all. All right, babe. peace.